Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Um, I'm Anthony Rowley, um, former president of the club, and it's my pleasure to act as moderator today. Um, before I introduce today's guest, let me just say that we're joined on the top table by Keldon Ashari, who is the president of the club. And we're also very happy that Nakao-san's wife, Asako-san, is also with us. She's sitting at the end of the row there. Um, okay, well... Um, <laughs> I hope that's not a bad omen. Um, okay, well, the, 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 to my right, of course, is our guest, who's Mr. Takahiko Nakao, who um, is known to you all, I'm sure, because he's appeared in this club on numerous occasions in the past. He was, until January the 16th, the president of the Asian Development Bank in Manila. But he stepped down on the 16th, uh, into not into retirement, but retiring from that position after f seven very demanding years as head of the ADB. And I say demanding because obviously running a, a multilateral organization which answers to 68 member countries um, across a huge swathe of territories and cultures, and having to administer a staff of some 3,400 people employed in Manila and across the region and beyond is no easy job. Um, and yet, despite accomplishing this, this, this task successfully, Nakao-san somehow managed to find time to lead a team of ADB economists and others in producing a book, uh, which is called Asia's Journey to Prosperity. Um, <laughs> here is the book. It's not actually published yet, but it will be in March, and it'll be available through the ADB office here in Tokyo. And some of the literature which you have today describes what the book has to say. Um, I, I, reading the book, I'm, I must say, I personally found it very interesting, uh, simply because it is interesting. <laughs> what I mean by that is, you know, tomes on, books on economy are not always all that easy reading, but this one is. Um, in the book, very quickly, uh, he, he sets out to demystify what um, has been termed the East Asian economic miracle and to dispel the theory that there was something uniquely Asian about the region's remarkable journey to prosperity. Instead, he says it's been a process of sheer application, hard work, learning lessons from what went right and what went wrong, and being open to ideas as much as to trade and investment. Um, apart from talking about the book, Nakao-san will be talking about Asia, the prospects for the Asia region from the standpoint of his seven years expertise and experience, extensive experience, um, uh, including China, India and Southeast Asia. Uh, I just mentioned briefly that before becoming president of the ADB, Mr. Nakao was vice minister for international affairs at Japan's Ministry of Finance and he served as economic advisor at the IMF in Washington as well as at the Japanese embassy there. Uh, he's been a visiting professor at the University of Tokyo and he holds a BA in economics from the, from the University of Tokyo and also a Master of Business Administration from the University of California at Berkeley. Um, well, I, I, that's about all I have to say except that uh, remarkably Mr. Nakai is also writing his memoirs now <laughs> about his time at the ADB so there will be yet another book to come. Um, okay, well with that, I'll hand over to Nakao-san. Please switch your mobile phones to uh, mana mode or switch them off as a courtesy to our guest. And please join me in welcoming our speaker. Yeah, uh, this uh, phone for a while. Uh, uh, thank you very much for introducing uh, me, uh, Anthony, uh, uh, Mr. Rory. And he has been a very uh, good uh, counterpart of uh, uh, my media among uh, uh, writers, and uh, we have been uh, kind of uh, counterparts of friends for more than 10 years or 20 years. <laughs> and uh, today, uh, I'd like to quickly uh, discuss uh, what uh, was uh, uh, my uh, presidency uh, time uh, in terms of uh, economic uh, issues in Asia and the world, and uh, very quickly about ADB, but I'd like to spend more time for this book, which I spend more than 400 or uh, well, 500 hours myself, uh, like a chief editor. So uh, uh, that's about it. And uh, so I'll maybe this is better to use. I think so. If you don't, okay. just put, uh, so uh, I'll use this. 
Yes, uh, I, I'll quickly uh, I, I describe what uh, is ADB for people who are not very familiar with but ADB is uh, 49 original members and 19 uh, non-regional members and uh, total is uh, 68. So compared to Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank, which has about 100 uh, membership, uh, it is uh, more limited, but because uh, oh, the ADB doesn't want to expand our membership too much, uh, 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 so it is uh, regional members which are the uh, Asia uh, in definitions of uh, SCAP or of uh, United Nations, and it's up to uh, Georgia, and uh, it includes uh, Iran, but Iran didn't join ADB in 1968 because they couldn't get the presidency and also headquarters. Headquarters is in uh, Manila. And uh, there are 19 non-regional members, uh, uh, including Europe and uh, the, uh, America and Canada. But uh, uh, AIB has uh, so many members from Africa, Middle East, and Latin America. Anyone can be welcome. But in our case, uh, it's to support the development of Asia. And uh, those non-regional members are not for investment, but for supporting Asia. So there is a difference in uh, idea. Mr. Jin, uh, who is uh, the president of AIB, I have uh, uh, been uh, kind of a, uh, a partnership for, with, uh, with him for uh, these uh, five or six years, and I have met him maybe more than ten times, and uh, uh, so we are cooperating uh, uh, down uh, just a rival. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the difference, and we have about 35,000 uh, staff, including international staff, which uh, who, who, who must move uh, anywhere in the world. Those are about uh, 1,300. Uh, so in total, 3,500, including uh, resident missions in most of the countries. So AIB doesn't uh, have those uh, resident missions, and staff number is about 200 uh, something. So at this moment, at least, uh, ADB has a much uh, bigger operations and uh, uh, presence. Uh, yeah, because uh, there is anyway the question about AIB, so that's why I'm uh, a little bit uh, referring to AIB. Uh, so country data, maybe I don't need to explain, but one of the uh, re remarkable thing is every time I see this, uh, China's uh, uh, total GDP uh, is uh, uh, increasing, and it is like 14 trillion dollars today as compared to the U.S. of 2020. Uh, the U.S. is also growing very fast, and per capita GDP is now 62,000 according to this data. And uh, Japan's uh, per capita GDP is about 40,000. So uh, around 1990s, uh, Japan's per capita GDP is uh, larger than that of the United States. But uh, because of our uh, demography, because of uh, slow growth and so on, uh, uh, per capita GDP of uh, Japan is now uh, not as much as before. But anyway, uh, China's presence uh, is very clear from this one. India has a very large population, but still per capita is uh, low, and uh, the uh, total size of uh, GDP is not uh, comparable to uh, uh, China. But it is also growing very uh, fast, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, overall uh, uh, the uh, developing Asia, excluding these countries, which is Korea, Singapore, uh, Taipei, China. We call it Taipei, China, by the way. Uh, it is a separate uh, part, uh, a member uh, in addition to uh, People's Republic of China. When China joined uh, ADB in 1986, uh, then uh, President Fujioka tried to keep uh, Taipei, China as a separate membership. And uh, uh, so these is uh, those countries, and Singapore also is a part of it. But excluding it, uh, the developing Asia's uh, growth rate is, uh, has been uh, very solid, uh, uh, like a 6%, uh, even after the global financial crisis. Uh, so uh, although there is a lot of discussion about secular stagnation of the world economy, Asia is still growing. Uh, that is one of the important messages. Uh, and uh, 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 ADB's uh, uh, shares, uh, ordinary capital resources, Japan and the United States are the same uh, shares, and also voting share is the same because of uh, the capital contribution. But ADF, which is a concessional lending and grant before and today, because of the combination of capital for concessional lending and ordinary lending, it's only grant operation, but the cumulative contribution to ADF is uh, 
much more than uh, uh, capital subscription to ordinary capital resources, and Japan made a huge uh, 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 contribution to ADF, and which has more than 35 billion uh, contributions uh, cumulatively. Uh, international staff number, Japan and the United States are the biggest, but India, Australia, Korea, UK, PRC, those are all loyal staff to me, uh, to ADB, and they are so devoted to the development of Asia. So I uh, I've never felt uh, the nationalities, uh, difference of nationalities and uh, rivalry between the people. I, I try to make uh, gender balance uh, better, and uh, we are trying to get uh, 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 to reach 40% of women's shares among uh, international staff, and at uh, this moment it is like 37% uh, women. Because uh, this bank is about infrastructure, technology, and so on, uh, generally speaking, it's more difficult to get uh, 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 women out of those uh, 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 areas, but there are more people, women, who are studying uh, engineering and uh, STEM, I mean science, technology, and uh, uh, engineering and mathematics. So I think uh, we can increase, uh, continue to increase uh, women's uh, share. Uh, ADB's operations uh, is uh, uh, quite large, but uh, compared to the huge needs of countries, it is uh, small. So uh, uh, outstanding lending is about $100 uh, uh, billion, and uh, uh, yearly commitment is like uh, 20 one, uh, uh, and including grants, it is about $22 billion. Uh, during my time, uh, the lending plus uh, grant operation increased uh, from about $14 billion in 2013 to $22 billion. Although we are now focusing more on quality, quantity, volume is also important uh, to show the presence in Asia, especially because of AIB and especially because of a G20 uh, request uh, to the multilateral institutions to lend more for infrastructure to support growth. And our lending uh, in terms of country, this is also including uh, grant operations. <coughs> Uh, and uh, 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 last year, 2019, I'm sorry, this doesn't work very well, but by the way, there is no country name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry about it. Uh, but uh, the, the biggest uh, share is uh, India. The second one is now India. I think a printed version is uh, oh, should be oh, okay. Yeah, no, it's not. Uh, so yeah, we should be careful that uh, it is not done uh, this way. Anyway, the uh, first uh, biggest one is uh, in the countries uh, uh, at now, in India, and then Philippines, and uh, uh, China, and uh, other countries, Indonesia, and so on, important <laughs> shares. And uh, in terms of uh, the uh, uh, sectors, uh, <coughs> Yeah, there are uh, 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 differences in in in, in yeah, but uh, power and uh, uh, power uh, water and uh, transport uh, uh, is important areas, and we pay more and more attention to uh, renewables uh, in, in in terms of uh, energy uh, projects. And that's it. Uh, so. This is about uh, uh, our work, and uh, when I visited uh, China in uh, December last year, by the way, I visited China 16 times uh, during uh, my term, and uh, 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 so December one was the last one, and I was interviewed by the uh, English, uh, uh, English program of uh, Chinese uh, <coughs> Chinese, uh, that's okay, it is now uh, good. So Chinese uh, 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 TV program of English, and I was interviewed for 25 minutes or so, and uh, one question was interesting to me, and what are the uh, uh, take of uh, me during my presidency regarding uh, Asia or the world? And uh, I mentioned three things. One is uh, the continued growth of Asia, 
which makes uh, Asian share in the uh, world economy much greater, uh, solid growth of Asia, as I said, and uh, China's presence is very much large. And uh, then uh, impact of technologies, new technology like AI and big data are becoming more uh, obvious, and uh, it's uh, regarding uh, jobs and uh, uh, monopoly of the power, profit, and uh, uh, the retail industry is now uh, quite impacted, and the way people behave is changing. So that is one of the important issues. And. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, the third point is uh, there are so many geopolitical issues and uh, political issues in countries uh, beyond economic issues, uh, including uh, the such uh, initiative like AIB or a new development bank or Belt and Road Initiative if it, it comes to the Chinese issues, but also China-U.S. Uh, trade dispute, uh, Brexit, and. Uh, uh, there are so many political issues in Europe, uh, America, and Modi, uh, Prime Minister Modi, I met him uh, three times, and uh, uh, President Widodo of uh, Indonesia. There are so many difficult issues in countries, so uh, those are, uh, I think, uh, uh, issues we are now facing. And uh, in, in, in my presidency, what I recall as uh, important work uh, for me and for ADB is uh, one is, uh, once again, merging uh, the capital uh, of uh, contributions of uh, ordinary capital resource and ADF uh, concessional lending. It's, uh, in a sense, uh, not a good idea to not to use the leverage for lending to Vietnam and Pakistan through concessional lending uh, without leverage. So in the past, uh, $35 billion is uh, outstanding uh, contributions, and we are just lending it to the Vietnam and Pakistan without issuing bond. Uh, so ordinary capital resource, we are using uh, bond issue, and ADB has a AAA rating, and uh, uh, equity is uh, used as a buffer uh, risk take, and then we issued bond to lend. But uh, we merged it, and our lending capacity is much increased, and we can still increase our lending without uh, uh, capital replenishment or increase, which uh, many member countries don't want to see because of the budget uh, uh, constraint. The second point, uh, uh, what I uh, want, uh, uh, believe was important was uh, ADB's relation with uh, China and uh, my stance with the AIB is uh, it is a partner. We should regard it a partner instead of a, a rival or a <laughs> Uh, uh, of course, not the enemy, but the uh, competitor. But uh, <laughs> uh, we should make uh, uh, a partnership with them. And America and United, uh, Japan didn't join AIIB. And it is understandable because uh, if uh, the US and Japan become members, uh, the contributions uh, of uh, equity should be uh, a very large amount, uh, billions of dollars. and. Uh, Procurement is open to everyone, including non-members at the AIIB. And also, because of uh, the quality and pricing, uh, uh, American or Japanese uh, products are, are not as competitive uh, as uh, those of uh, uh, Chinese or Koreans anyway. And uh, in a sense, uh, we can cooperate uh, through ADB. And in the case of Japan, JICA and JB can also cooperate to the AIIB. But I think uh, it's uh, important to engage China in a positive way, and uh, we, um, it is my belief that uh, uh, ADB will continue to lend uh, China for at least for, for, for a while. So there is a discussion that the ADB shouldn't uh, lend to China anymore because China has a lot of money, and China is more developed, uh, $10,000 per capita. But the World Bank is still lending, and uh, the World Bank is, by the way, still lending to Brazil, which has even higher per capita GDP. So even the uh, share is uh, becoming smaller uh, for ch our lending to China, but uh, it's uh, uh, worth the lending because uh, we can do things together regarding the environmental protection, climate change actions, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, in the past, in the early years after China joined uh, ADB in 1986, uh, uh, the lending was for coastal regions and the industrial base and uh, uh, port and railways and so on, bridges. But today it is uh, mostly uh, 
uh, almost all of them are regarding uh, regarding uh, uh, the uh, climate change or environment, which has externality, positive externality to uh, neighboring countries. And uh, uh, we could uh, agree to increase the uh, lending term, uh, in interest rate to China toward the end of last year, so that uh, we have, uh, in the past, uh, uh, there was a lower pricing for poorer countries, but there is no difference uh, in lending uh, to China, India, Indonesia, and so on. But today, uh, last year, we decided to increase uh, interest rate to China a little bit, uh, starting from 2021. So China supported this idea because they want to do work with us because of our expertise in uh, procurement, uh, safeguard policy for social and environmental impact, and uh, advanced technologies. So uh, there are discussions that, again, uh, from uh, many member countries that we don't need to lend to China, but uh, it is my stance that uh, engagement with China through ADB is efficient and uh, uh, good, effective. And I, every time I went to China, I said uh, 16 times, every time I went there, I met with the uh, finance minister, for two or three hours discussing many issues of Chinese uh, economy. And sometimes I met the state leaders of uh, Politburo, including uh, Han, Han Zhe, uh, who is uh, now Deputy Prime Minister, or uh, Lu He, uh, who, who is also Prime Minister, and also Li Kaohsiung. What is his? Li Kaohsiung. Li Kaohsiung, yeah. The uh, uh, Japanese have a very strong uh, uh, I mean, uh, different ways of pronunciation, but uh, 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 Premier Lee. Uh, so uh, through those uh, discussions, I, uh, 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 in a sense, uh, gave an opinion. I wouldn't say uh, recommended or advised, but uh, for China, uh, the uh, poverty reduction is uh, now progressing, but the income inequality is increasing. So to pay more attention to the income inequality, the gap between the coastal regions and the inland re regions is more important. Progressive uh, income tax, uh, inheritance taxes may be needed, and also uh, real estate tax or property tax also should be included. So instead of uh, just uh, pursuing the growth or uh, industrial uh, progress, uh, the China uh, should pay more attention to equality of the people. Uh, because of socialist uh, system or socialist idea, uh, <laughs> there is no such mechanism to redistribute income. Uh, it is, in a sense, uh, 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 ideally, peoples are equal, and, and not like uh, capitalist countries. So in a sense, they lack mechanism to and also, there is a very strong uh, registration system of Fuko, and uh, people who have registrations in farming area cannot uh, can go to the uh, city uh, urban areas, but uh, their kids are not given the uh, formal education because they don't have a registration. So, uh, in that regard, it is. Uh, uh, the, 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 I think they. Uh, I really believe that uh, China should start paying more attention, not just to poverty reduction, but for the equality of the people. That is uh, about uh, my work uh, for ADB, and I already spent <laughs> uh, 15 minutes or 20. But quickly about the uh, book, uh, so, oh, yes. Uh, so you can look at these things uh, maybe later, but uh, uh, I'll uh, mention what I want to say. <laughs> and. Uh, one of uh, yeah, you, uh, yeah, yeah, we we had the ADB history book uh, 2017, and at that moment uh, we started. We already we already had the uh, uh, idea that we should publish a history of Asian development uh, 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 after the war uh, or uh, during these uh, 50 years uh, since 1966 uh, when uh, ADB was established. And uh, the uh, uh, conclusion, and the, the idea is uh, because uh, there was a very famous book of uh, Asian Miracle in 1993 by 
uh, the World Bank, and it is a well-known book for at least for economists. And uh, it covers only Japan and Nis and Indonesia, Thailand, and Malaysia as a high-growth countries, and uh, market versus uh, <coughs> government and so on. But uh, since 1993, there was a dramatic change in uh, the uh, landscape of uh, lands uh, landscape of uh, Asia. China's growth is uh, remarkable. India is also growing uh, based on the market, uh, in, uh, and uh, Vietnam and other countries uh, are, are, are from uh, central control system to market system. Central Asia became independent from a Soviet system. Yeah, it, it became already independent in '93, and they suffered a lot uh, during the transition, but uh, they are more stable. So. Why not uh, writing a new book? And uh, it is based on the 15 chapters, including industrial transformation, agriculture sector, technology, and uh, income distributions and poverty reductions, government versus market, and uh, trade and foreign direct investment, and so on. So uh, I spent uh, uh, more than 500 hours or 400 hours for this book, and. Uh, as a CEO of uh, the bank, uh, I wonder whether it was a good idea to spend so much time. But I think, <laughs> yeah, of course, I did work for operations also. But uh, uh, the last, uh, 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 I mean, half a year, I spent much time for this book because I think it's important to have a voice about our own histories from Asia. And uh, this book is a production of uh, uh, more than 50 uh, economists of uh, Asia led by the Economic Research uh, Department and Mr. Sawada, former Tokyo University Development Economics uh, Professor and uh, many Chinese uh, uh, economists, Korean, Indonesian, Filipino, and my assistant, uh, who is a Malaysian, who has a PhD from Stanford. Uh, most of uh, people, except me, has a, a, had, have, a, have a PhD. So uh, it's a really professional. But I provide a lot of ideas. Uh, we should have a chapter about gender. We should include the climate change to the section. Service sector is becoming much, much uh, more important in these years. Uh, so not manufacturing, but service sector is also important. And also trade is different today. In the past, it was a flying geese model. <coughs> Japan goes ahead and then needs and uh, Indonesia and so on. But today it is more global value change and network. So. Uh, I provided a lot of ideas, and I made uh, this book uh, readable, interesting to read, with a lot of episodes. Uh, uh, like uh, about the macroeconomy, uh, we quoted uh, the uh, remark of Strasskan in 2010 that the, about the Asian financial crisis. Uh, we means IMF. Uh, we made uh, mistakes, and but we also learned the lessons. So we, uh, in a sense, included uh, the uh, uh, observations about uh, the causes and the consequences of Asian financial crisis of 1990s and global financial crisis of 2008. Asia's growth is. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, in 2013, I became president, and in 2014-15, I visited many countries, and I came to the idea that uh, there are maybe eight reasons for uh, the uh, growth of uh, uh, Asia or success of Asia. That is uh, infrastructure investment and education and health and uh, uh, liberal uh, uh, free trade and uh, investment regimes to invite the FDI from others and market or private, private sector, and macroeconomic stability, and inclusiveness to provide opportunities to more people, and governance, including anti-corruption efforts, and leadership by uh, uh, Lee Kuan Yew, or President Park of the 1960s of Korea, or Mahathir of Malaysia. Those people gave a vision to the people, leadership, and supported by the bureaucracy, and also stability and peace, except the period of Vietnam and Cambodia conflict and Sri Lanka conflict and others. Africa, Afghanistan is still suffering, but overall, overall uh, it is more peaceful regions. Uh, but partly because of uh, Pax Americana or uh, this arrangement, security arrangement. So uh, the book covers all these issues uh, in detail. And uh, what are the main message? That is, uh, first is uh, private sector and uh, 
the market uh, is so crucial for growth. Uh, it's not the state which is more important. And uh, there is a discussion often that in Asia, uh, the state-guided uh, capitalism is uh, more prevalent. That is a reason for success. But in my view, the uh, private sector is, of course, an essential part of the uh, engine of growth. And uh, if we look at the uh, Japanese case, in major period, already railways are uh, built by private sector, uh, like a merchants or capitalists uh, who want to transport the silk from inland to the port. <coughs> and power has been always provided by the uh, private sector. It has never been national, except uh, during the war time. Uh, and uh, Japan has a very strong traditions of uh, capitalist uh, kind of ideas, including future market rights, which is very famous in Osaka. So Japan is not state-guided. I think uh, Sony, uh, Panasonic, these people are so innovative. Uh, they started uh, having a lamp company or a bicycle with a small motor. Those are the uh, uh, basis of uh, growth. And uh, Meti's growth, uh, uh, Meti's uh, Miti, uh, uh, the role was not uh, uh, I mean, uh, 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 no, not, not uh, un, unimportant, but it is important, but it is to promote private sector uh, uh, activities. The second point is uh, import substitution was a really bad policy, and uh, many countries in Latin America, India, and Indonesia resorted to import substitution for some time from the idea of a socialist, centrally controlled ideas to industrialize. So agriculture sector uh, is not uh, 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 lucrative or it's not a growth engine, but uh, uh, the uh, industry countries, industrial countries take advantage of uh, 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 commodity countries and it is based on the previous uh, uh, center peripheral uh, theory. Uh, in that uh, the uh, commodity uh, uh, countries uh, in Latin America continue to be exploited by industrial countries unless they industrialize themselves. So self-reliance and industrialization by the state and import substitution was uh, the policy. But it was total failure because it is not efficient and uh, countries need to import the technology capital goods and uh, commodities anyway. So in the end, Latin American countries suffer the current account uh, uh, deficit crisis and IMF came in. In case of Japan, it was export-oriented, uh, uh, often mentioned. But I think it is uh, external-oriented because uh, Japan had to export to import. So until 1960s, uh, Japan consistently had a current account deficit and uh, uh, the uh, monetary policy and fiscal policy had to be tightened uh, to avoid uh, kind of uh, too much use of a uh, foreign exchange uh, because of a fixed exchange rate system. But anyway, uh, the Japan uh, took uh, more external oriented policy from the beginning because they had to import uh, uh, oil and coal and iron ore and so on. Uh, uh, and uh, these countries, uh, these Korea and so on, followed, in a sense, uh, the policy which import but also export. And I think it was very successful. And uh, the third point is uh, industrial policy. There is a lot of discussion about industrial policy. But uh, we have, uh, we mentioned in this book that some policies uh, uh, were successful, some policies failed. And if a domestic market is small, if a bureaucracy is not efficient, it usually leads to the inefficiency and sometimes disaster. So industrial policies, if it is used very well uh, in a uh, targeted way and in a pilot basis, uh, it works. But uh, I wouldn't recommend many countries pass to target, uh, targeted industrial policy. In that regard, uh, Chinese policies of uh, industry 2025 and so on is a too much uh, emphasis of uh, state guidance and uh, uh, they, 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 they merge uh, more state-owned uh, companies uh, uh, and so on. They become big and they look 
uh, uh, I mean, efficient, effective. But in the end, I think we need more competition. And the fourth point is uh, government uh, uh, roles. And I think it's, of course, important, and especially the how to build institutions like a property uh, right, commercial laws and the private uh, civil laws and uh, uh, the uh, uh, banking system, central bank system, those institutions are important. And in case of major restrictions, again, it is discussed. Japan's uh, case is discussed in six pages, and Chinese case is also discussed in six pages in this book. By the way, this is already uh, can be downloaded from the uh, homepage of uh, Asia ADB, and uh, uh, the physical book will be published at the end of March or April. But anyway, uh, during the major restrictions, there was no such idea to uh, to manage a uh, uh, kind of uh, business by the government because the Japanese model was the UK or US. There was no such idea that the state uh, does work. So railways were more by private sectors and power was by private sector. There was a pilot for railways and uh, textile and so on, but it was just a pilot. So oh, oh, the institutions are important. So in the Japanese case, uh, compulsory education was started in 1884 or something. And the uh, university was built ahead of uh, many other things and uh, invited so many foreign scholars and experts. So that's, uh, in a sense, uh, the way China grew fast after opening up uh, in 1978. They invited so many experts from abroad. Uh, so, uh, when I visited uh, 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 Beijing, I had a good discussion with uh, Justin Lin, Professor Justin Lin of uh, uh, Beijing University, and he's now promoting the idea of a kind of a Asian way or Asian consensus or a Beijing consensus, some people would say it. I don't know whether he said it or not, but uh, there is an Asian way. But I don't think uh, there is a clear consensus about the Asian way. Could, uh, countries are different. Korea's uh, growth uh, development is different pattern from Japan. China's uh, uh, development in these uh, 30 years is so different from that of Japan. Uh, but of course, uh, the uh, generally speaking, uh, Asian countries follow the kind of a standard economics uh, ideas, which is uh, free market and institutions and uh, prudent democratic policies, uh, trade and capital liberalizations, although it should be sequential and step by instead of a big bang approach, which is like uh, in Russia, which is not very successful. So, uh, of course, uh, there are more programmatic approaches and gradual approaches by countries, especially if we look at the Chinese case after 1978. But if uh, countries do, do uh, the uh, prescriptions of IMF right away without a step-by-step -step approach, it's uh, just uh, uh, not, uh, not uh, sensible. So, uh, of course, uh, we should be pragmatic. And it's not the Asian way. It's, uh, uh, it's a sensible way. That's uh, our idea. But we had a very good discussion with uh, Justin Lee, and he invited me to Beijing as a visiting professor, which I declined because after seven years in Manila, I now enjoy life in uh, Tokyo, including food and uh, this cool weather. But anyway, uh, uh, that is a wonderful point. And uh, there are many interesting points uh, in addition, but I cannot uh, touch on. But one of the issues is the technology. And there was an, uh, Krugman's. Uh, uh, criticism of uh, Asian uh, growth in 1990s, uh, which is uh, Asia grew because of uh, uh, resource mobilizations of capital and abundant labor. And it's like a Soviet. Uh, he, uh, in a sense, uh, had the analogy of uh, Asian development with uh, that of a Soviet. But uh, it is not the same, because uh, Asian growth at that point, uh, including that of China after 1978, was uh, by private sector. And it was not resource mobilization by the state, which becomes inefficient, but uh, good mobilization of uh, abundant labor and capital, including foreign direct investment, by the private sector. So it's totally different. And if you look at this uh, 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 I mean graph, uh, uh, the, the uh, total factor productivity, uh, which is yellow part, uh, it's uh, not explained by the labor capital and the human capital 
uh, improvement like uh, education here as uh, it is becoming larger and we expected it. In 1990s, it was uh, more based on the abundant labor and capital, but uh, it is becoming more efficient uh, because of productivity and technology growth. And uh, gender, it is interesting to see that uh, Women are no, now have uh, more educated uh, than boys. Uh, in the past, uh, uh, school years for uh, boys were longer in all Asian countries, but today, in many countries, uh, 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 the women's uh, education years are longer because it's worth uh, investing in women. And uh, there are so many discussions about the infrastructure, and uh, there was a motorization before, and. Uh, uh, the highway was more important, but we are now investing more in railway. And uh, a billet train or high-speed train in Japan in 1964 had a very strong impetus uh, to European countries to build a high-speed uh, train network. And in China, it is now growing very fast. So, so in every detail, uh, in, in 15 chapter, there are so many interesting episodes. And the first, uh, uh, electricity uh, in Asia, uh, do you know where it is? And it is in Toranomon, and there was a kind of uh, the industrial uh, uh, institution there, and they used it for the uh, transmission, uh, I mean, uh, for Morse uh, uh, signal. And then the first uh, hydro, en uh, hydro energy was produced in Kyoto, Keage using uh, Biwako's uh, water. So those episodes are uh, in this book. <laughs> so uh, this book is uh, reflecting not the cool idea of mine, but uh, uh, us, but uh, it's about passion to Asia. Asia has a basis for growth, and uh, it will continue to grow. But we shouldn't be triumphant that the Asia is uh, 21st century is uh, Asian century, because uh, still the West has a more influence over ideas and so on. So Asia will continue, should continue to make efforts for science and technologies and institutions, and we should keep a peace in this region, which is the most important basis for the growth. So I already spoke more than Anthony allowed me, but uh, this is about it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nakasan. Okay, questions from the working press first. Um, perhaps I could just begin with a question. It's a very journalistic question, but I'm a journalist, so I, I'm excused. Um, there's obviously a great deal of alarm at the moment over this coronavirus, whether it's going to have a major impact on Asian um, production and, and so on. I mean, um, in very broad terms, and of course on tourism, too, in very broad terms, uh, are you concern that it could be something really serious for the region's growth or or, or not? So uh, uh, I'm not expert on this area and uh, the ADB or uh, other institutions haven't uh, produced uh, assessment of the impact. The IMF, uh, uh, the Kristalina uh, uh, Jorugeva, who, who was a, a, a kind of colleague to me when she was uh, the uh, deputy for the World Bank. But anyway, uh, of course it is, uh, it has an impact uh, because of uh, demand and psychologies, uh, but also the supply chain is damaged. So it has a large impact uh, on the economy and no doubt about it. But to what extent depends on the length of this uh, 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 confusion and also how, how, how it can recover quickly after that. So it's too early to tell, but I think, uh, of course, there is a damage, but uh, uh, it would uh, recover anyway, uh, sooner or later. And as uh, we discussed uh, between Mr. Rory and uh, me, uh, uh, this is not so different from flu, uh, ordinary flu, in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of uh, mortality and so on. So, uh, of course, uh, this is an uh, important issue, and we should address this uh, very seriously, so that it wouldn't uh, have a major uh, pandemic. Uh, but uh, 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 yeah, let's see. Uh, but uh, the ADB is also addressing uh, health issues uh, in addition to infrastructure and education. So we have a partnership with the WHO, and we supported uh, uh, the aid uh, uh, HIV. Uh, 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 kind of uh, 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 anti-HIV operations in uh, uh, Mekong sub-regions and Papua New Guinea and so on, and also uh, non-communicable diseases in many countries, including Pacific. So 
we have a large uh, health operation, but this kind of operation is more handled by the uh, WHO. Okay, thank you. Right, questions? Um, yes, uh, but no, no questions from working press. Um, all right, well, um, Kelden, you, you have a question, yes, please. Thank you, Anthony. You said this is not the Asian country, uh, Asian century. And uh, what kind of century is this? Yeah, uh, if, it, uh, if we could brand it with any name, basically. <laughs> the influence of the West, you said, is still strong. So how much dependent on Asia and how much Asia can be uh, dependent from the West? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so. Asia uh, will be uh, more than 50% of the world GDP by 2050, and I think uh, it will happen. And, but uh, Asia also has a population more than half of uh, the world, so it's not very, I mean, surprising that Asia's uh, GDP is uh, more than half of the world. And uh, but what I, I said is uh, uh, this: I did not say that this is not Asian century, but the Asian countries uh, shouldn't be triumphant. Uh, or to overconfident, complacent, that is Asian century. Because uh, in my view, the West has had uh, power for these uh, 500 years or so because of uh, navigation, because of science, and combination of science and technologies, and institutions like uh, joint stock companies, and insurance system, commercial law, and international. Those were developed in these uh, several centuries, uh, at least uh, since the 15th century. So what I want to say is, uh, of course, uh, Asia is becoming more important. And uh, uh, as, uh, uh, I'm sorry, that uh, in this, uh, uh, Asia was, uh, in a sense, no nothing in, in before. So in 1950s, in uh, 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 no one in Europe cared uh, Asia. So Mr. Gyoten, who was a vice minister mm. before, uh, said in his memorial that when he visited the uh, OECD headquarters in Paris in 90s, early 1960s, because uh, Japan became an OECD member in 1964, uh, European people, American people discussed uh, issues of Europe and America. No one really talked about the uh, Cultural Revolution of China, Vietnam War, and so on. So he said it is as if uh, the world is over. Uh, by uh, between Turkey and uh, Greece. So compared to that time, Asia's presence is very large, and uh, especially China's uh, emergence as a power hegemon is a very important issue. But what I said is uh, we shouldn't, uh, uh, we means Asian, <laughs> shouldn't be triumphant as if uh, this is an Asian hegemon. And all, because of population, the Asia's uh, definition itself is by the West, in a sense. So, so science and technology is a contribution to other regions, and we need to do more. Thank you. Good. My name is Kurt Sieber. Thank you so much for this presentation. I'm an associate member. Um, actually, I came to Japan in 1960, and I cared for Asia already at that time. Also, I'm European, actually. I'm Swiss. Uh, I have a, a, a delicate question, oh, if please. you don't mind. Uh, you mentioned about the um, ADP, uh, ADB doing uh, uh, or pushing strongly for um, renewables. Uh, on the other hand, we have Japan, who, which came under very strong attack, both in Madrid and in uh, Davos, by the way, in Switzerland. Um, and so my question to you is, uh, can I understand that uh, the ADP, ADB is no longer going to finance uh, coal uh, development uh, in the rest of the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's often asked questions. And uh, in short, uh, we don't have a plan to support uh, coal projects, uh, coal fi uh, uh, generators uh, for power. And the last one was in 19, uh, 2014. 
Jamashoro Power Project in Pakistan. So the World Bank and the ADB have a policy that we don't support the coal project except for very poor countries and where there is no alternative. So many environmental activists mentioned that we should never support coal. But at this moment, we don't have a plan to support coal. But at the same time, for poorer countries, they will go to coal anyway, even if uh, ADB and others don't support it. And uh, there is a such idea that it's better to make it uh, super, uh, 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 super critical. Uh, 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 what is what, what was the language? Yeah. But anyway, to make it uh, much cleaner energy. But of course, uh, there is an opinion that we should never do coal. But in reality, if uh, as we discussed in this environment and climate uh, section or power section. Uh, even today, the uh, power production in Germany uh, uh, is uh, dependent on coal by 40% or so of uh, uh, power, and uh, total energy share is also uh, still high. So, in a sense, it's uh, even developed countries, it's not so easy to replace uh, coal or oil energy by renewable automatically, uh, uh, instantly. But they are now investing more in renewable, and it is the cost of uh, investment of uh, renewable is becoming uh, more economical, uh, uh, less costly. So we'll move to that direction. And ADB, is, once again, uh, doesn't have a, uh, the plan to support a coal project. Yes. Mr. Nakao, thank you for a wonderful speech. I'd love to ask um, if you would give some advice to students who would love to work for ADP in the future. I'm a student member here, so. So what, second, what um, was your question? Okay. Advice you would give to students who would love to work for ADP in the future. Oh, I see. <laughs> for the record, can you okay, okay. say your name, please? Identify yourself. Okay, I'm Lillian. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so we have uh, uh, once again 3,500 staff and uh, international staff uh, is now uh, uh, 1,300 and uh, they, are, uh, they are from different countries. Many have uh, the economics uh, degrees but many also have uh, degrees in uh, environmental uh, protection areas and also accounting, uh, uh, and there were so many lawyers also, 50 or 60 lawyers uh, in our legal department to look at the contracts and also uh, other issues. Uh, so my uh, advice, uh, study hard. <laughs> uh, ambitious, to be ambitious. <laughs> mm. And also please continue to have uh, the kind of uh, uh, interesting uh, global affairs and Asian affairs. Uh, I have uh, two relatively young uh, 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 sons, uh, 18 and uh, 15, 19 and 16. And I said, I, I'm telling them that if we just look at Japan, it is uh, shrinking in terms of economic size and so on. But if we broaden the, our scope uh, to Asia and uh, the world, there are so many uh, challenges, there are many opportunities. Japan can be also benefiting from uh, uh, those uh, new uh, emerging uh, powers and ideas. So if we broaden the scope, uh, our life will be more interesting. Mm -hmm. Just briefly, you, you've stressed gender issues, and you've said that um, women, uh, more women now are studying mathematics and science and, and engineering and so on. Which countries are making the most progress in this regard, and which are the people that are lagging behind, do you think, in this uh, scientific or engineering education of women? Yeah, education is a very important part of ADB work, and I visited many countries to see education sector. So, for instance, when I met uh, uh, Prime Minister Hasina of uh, Bangladesh, uh, she was so keen about girls' education, and I visited middle school there, and many girls are studying uh, science and uh, mathematics, and uh, when I visited uh, uh, school, which uh, I, uh, we supported uh, uh, the, uh, through the uh, uh, computer uh, uh, facilities and so on, 
I ask the question, what uh, do you want to be in the future? And one girl stood up and said that she wants to be an engineer for NASA, satellite, I mean, uh, space agency of uh, the United States. And I mentioned this to Prime Minister Asina, who is also a lady, of course. And she was so happy to hear that uh, women are interested in science and technologies. When I uh, visited uh, uh, Lao, uh, I visited a uh, vocational school, and one girl from a rural area wanted to be uh, the engineer for bike repair. And uh, when I visited Indonesia, there are so many women who wanted to be a shipbuilding uh, engineer. So, in any countries, uh, th there is a maybe a uh, perception that in Asia, gender equality is uh, uh, not uh, progressing uh, 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 very speedily. But in some countries, uh, it is moving very quickly, and the social norm is changing uh, dramatically. Uh, even in Japan, I would say uh, the women's role in the society is becoming much greater today. So 30 years ago, maybe the main caster of uh, TV was mostly a man, um, but uh, the women are more supportive. But today, many uh, main uh, uh, casters uh, are women, and women uh, are regarded more reliable the men, women. <laughs> I shouldn't mention gender-related issues, but the women are generally better, more disciplined, and uh, more reliable. <laughs> so you mean this is the Asian women century? Yeah, I think there, are, there is a very large scope for women to 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 make a more contribution. But to do that. Uh, we need a more, a better uh, the life uh, work balance. Uh, we need to, as uh, the uh, Japanese government is trying to do, we need to economize uh, the working hours instead of, uh, uh, in, in case of media, uh, for instance, uh, they work until late to get the, the most recent uh, news and so on. And they must wait until the printed version is ready, but uh, they can do it in the uh, in, uh, internet and so on. So we should economize working hours so that uh, men should also play a role, more role, much greater role in, in, in our family uh, life. Uh, I shouldn't mention what uh, my wife said to me. When I said uh, that I should be a good husband because I cook and I clean and I, <laughs> I wash the dishes and so on, but she said, and I made a lot of contribution, but it's not a contribution, it's a sharing the <laughs> house work instead of a contribution. Contribution is a bad word, uh, because as if it is a women's role to cook and so on. So, and I did it because I economized my work at the Ministry of Finance, and I tried to be very efficient at the office, and I came back to office uh, home earlier. So that kind of uh, the sentiment, uh, I mean, uh, idea that we should balance, we shouldn't just try to be perfect in work, but try to be also good uh, at the house. and. Uh, in Japan, lunchbox is too perfect, too too beautiful, isn't it? And for that, uh, many mothers must work hard for making good-looking uh, lunchbox, and I think it's too much. We shouldn't be perfect uh, just about one issue, but we should balance things. And that is uh, the way women have uh, more opportunities, because of technology and so on, women uh, choice is now smaller. Well, women's share shouldn't be the well, The family choice are smaller, so we should share that. Thank you. Um, yes, over here. Please identify yourself before you ask a question. Yes, yes, I will. My name is Stephen Veltoon. I am the uh, husband of a working journalist. Um, <laughs> but in, in my other life, I also am a, I'm a partner at PwC, which is just uh, across the street. Uh, Nakao-san, thank you very much for an interesting speech. Uh, it seemed to me that one of the conditions for the Asian development is a global trade system, mm. a global technology environment, mm. and a global science sharing. Uh, it does look in the world no. that the global technology sharing is going to be broken and is going to be decoupled between China and the US, which could lead to a decoupling of the science environment, could lead to a decoupling of the economic environment. So I think my first question is, do you see it happening that way as well? And if it would, what would be impact of that on Asia development? 
Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, as I said earlier, the open trade and investment uh, regime, which is also supported by the uh, trade policies of uh, developed countries uh, in these years, uh, were so supportive of the uh, growth of uh, Asian countries. But it is now changing uh, to the uh, maybe a uh, different direction. But that, uh, in my view, very broad view, we cannot totally decouple anyway. And uh, also, there can be uh, some adjustment because uh, uh, the globalizations and technologies, uh, generally speaking, benefit uh, elite class or uh, better off people, more educated people, much more than ordinary people. So there is uh, some repercussion naturally. So last, uh, last built uh, uh, workers and uh, farmers in France and so on, they don't enjoy as much as uh, elite uh, in terms of uh, globalizations and uh, technology. So there can be some adjustment to, to the uh, uh, trade and uh, globalization more generally. And also there is uh, some uh, security concern or geopolitical concern. So many people say it, it is much more divided. Uh, someone said uh, to me that it is much more divided. But if it is divided, the world, the countries are al always divided because of sovereignty. Taxpayers are voters for sovereign system and they must decide things. So. Globalization is, in a sense, pursued uh, in, uh, without any question so far, and as if it is uh, really granted. But I think we need some adjustment. So to your question, of course, it is a concern that uh, there are so many trade disputes and uh, decoupling of uh, technologies. And uh, uh, it is worrying to some extent, but it is also understandable adjustment to the global system. We shouldn't give up to the more harmonization overall. But the, uh, uh, my idea is we shouldn't take uh, granted that uh, these uh, globalizations and the uh, technologies always benefit the human uh, society uh, forever without any adjustment. I think uh, this is a part of adjustment and it shouldn't be extreme. We should be rational, but I don't, I'm not worried too much. Uh, yes. Uh, my name is uh, Yutaka Hokura, associate member, and thank you very much for excellent presentation. And my question is about uh, what they call a uh, middle income country trap. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you have raised four points about the key factors for economic success. But if I could have your Father comment or suggestion about uh, how to overcome the, well, such trap. I'll be very happy. Thank, Thank you. you. So middle income trap is often uh, mentioned in the context of uh, Latin America. Argentina, for instance, was um, one of the most uh, uh, advanced or highest income countries uh, in early uh, 20th centuries because of a beef trade uh, with the European countries, but it uh, became behind uh, and it is uh, still middle-income countries. So uh, there are such questions, uh, but uh, it depends on the countries. And if we look at Korea, for instance, or Taipei, China, or Singapore, Singapore is now the most advanced countries uh, uh, if we look at the per capita GDP. Of course, it's a small city country. But middle income trap is not uh, definite, and uh, countries can overcome it. But how can we overcome it? I would say it is a continued uh, progress in using market and private sector, continued investment in the education, and continued investment in infrastructure. If we look at the uh, Philippines, for instance, uh, the, there is uh, too much congestion of uh, traffic and uh, uh, power is uh, sufficient but uh, to accommodate uh, more growth maybe uh, Philippines needs uh, more power. So uh, railway, logistics and so on, we need uh, more investment in infrastructure. And the education again is so important and it's not just about uh, uh, the, the, the school enrollment in primary school or middle school, but it is also about the quality of education. So in Philippines, uh, the uh, education system is uh, 10 years up to uh, the college level, but it ex was extended to 12 years before going to college to make uh, the education quality up to the uh, uh, senior school, uh, senior high school uh, better. So there are many ways to address it. 
and the governance is important and the anti-corruption efforts. So there are many things, I, but I don't think uh, middle income trap is a definite one. I, I especially, I think the Korean case is so interesting. Korea was totally damaged after the uh, Korean War. And the per capita GDP of Korea in 1960 was lower than that of Ghana or Ivory Coast. But uh, the uh, uh, President Park uh, uh, industrialization policies was very effective and uh, uh, leadership was, uh, it turned out to be very effective and it was more external oriented import in, instead of import substitution. There was a uh, land reform uh, like in Japan and uh, more people became uh, more, I mean, uh, a little bit better off and they spent a lot of money for education. They studied a lot from uh, uh, the US and also Japan, and they uh, <coughs> learned a lot from uh, Panasonic and the uh, Japanese uh, uh, legal system and so on. They sent a lot of people to the United States. So uh, Korea is now regarded, uh, of course, the OECD member and high-income countries, and they are very innovative in k pops and so on. By the way, I added uh, in the end, in this book, after this is produced, I found that the K-pop is not mentioned. So it is included in the service sector because it's a very good example of an internationally marketed service sector. The service sector is much more important. By the way, I have a very strong view that even if there is an AI, it cannot replace <laughs> a human because the people want to have an empathy between people. We want to go to concert, we want to go to, go to the uh, rugby stadium, and if we look at the rugby alone, it's not interesting. It is empathy between the people, and I think there are many opportunities for service sector. By the way, I debated from your discussion too much, but <laughs> uh, uh, there, there, there are many ways to uh, uh, avoid a uh, middle income uh, a trap, although I think Asian countries still uh, need uh, more efforts to, uh, to, to avoid it. Okay, um, Carlson, you did say you'd take one more question. If there's no, I, I, oh yes, over here, please. This is the final question, I'm afraid. Uh, my name is Takahashi. I'm a friend of Mr. Nakao. So <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I must say that uh, I appreciate your great contribution. I, must, I can use this up to the ADB. And uh, today you didn't mention so much about it, the management of the ADP, but I know that you did a very good job on the management too, on the ADP. And uh, the books, uh, the first message is uh, you said that uh, maybe that uh, Asian countries stand on the common ground, like uh, market-oriented development by the private sector. It is a very good point, actually. So I'm, I'd like to ask you that your view on, still the politics matter, but uh, what is the view on the kind of the economic integration in the future, like uh, Europe mm. in Asia? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, Mr. Takahashi is my friend from my uh, university days, and he was uh, chief of uh, research institute of uh, BOJ, Bank of Japan. So he's not just a friend, but he's a very senior uh, BOJ official before. Uh, 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 yeah, about uh, 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 your question. Uh, so uh, your question is, uh, your question is uh, uh, integration. And uh, by the way, I, 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 I'm a very strong believer of a sovereign system. We need a community, we need a cooperation between sovereign states. But uh, the taxpayers and the voting voters uh, belong to the sovereign states still. So there is a bridge. Uh, in a sense, naturally, because people want to decide things uh, instead of uh, Belgium or I mean Brussels. Brussels. So uh, integration will happen, in the, is happening, uh, and uh, it happens in the economic uh, arena without uh, any intervention because of global value change and the inve investment uh, between each other from uh, Japan, FDI, uh, a lot to Malaysia and Thailand and so on. It was a, a kind of integration process, but today the countries uh, invest in each other. Uh, the uh, beer company, uh, San Miguel of uh, Philippines, investing in uh, real estate in many countries, in ASEAN countries, uh, uh, Indonesian uh, instant noodle companies investing abroad and so on. So integration is progressing, but uh, like uh, 
uh, more, I mean, uh, the de, de dual uh, integration like in Europe, I don't think it will happen in Asia. And even in Europe, which has a common uh, history of Christianity and Greek Roman legacy and the relative, uh, I mean, uh, relatives between uh, monarchies of uh, Europe, uh, they still have uh, difficulties of uh, uh, the dual integration. And I don't think Asia will uh, do that. And uh, I don't think it's a good idea to try to integrate uh, more than needed. But of course, uh, we need a cooperation and friendship. So, by the way, I'll maybe teach at uh, GRIPS uh, Graduate School for Policy, uh, Policy uh, Studies. Huh? Not studies. Mm, uh, uh, yeah, uh, studies. Uh, GRIPS in Roppongi, and also I'll teach in Tokyo University. But uh, what I really want to uh, do is uh, try to have a, a kind of a, the dialogue forums between Asian countries and uh, beyond America and Europe. To, to have a good uh, sense of cooperation, the friendship. But about uh, community like uh, EU or Euro system, I'm not so enthusiastic. But if it happens, of course, I'll welcome. You, you are a little more positive than I am. <laughs> but I'm a little bit uh, uh, I mean, prudent about uh, these kind of issues. Okay, well, thank you very much indeed. We, we have slightly over on our time, but it's very enjoyable. You mentioned dialogue. Um, we'd certainly like to inv involve you in more dialogues in this club, actually. And now that you're back in Japan, that's good news for us. Um, I'd like to offer you a one-year honorary membership of the club to encourage you to come Inclu back. Including that? Including that. Uh, no, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to, have to look into that, I'm not sure. Um, uh, so I must pay lunch, yeah, that's right. Even members should pay. Yeah. Uh, seriously, thank you very much for coming today, and please join me in well, thanking you. Okay.